Hey y'all, my name is Ashley and today I'm going to be finishing up the rest of my eyeshadow declutter. So I already did parts one and two and today's eyeshadow declutter is more of a collection because, spoiler alert, I only declutter one item but this is all of my high-end products. So Natasha Denona, Pat McGrath, brands that you find at Sephora, Patrick Ta, products like that. So. If you're interested to see the rest of my eyeshadow collection, then go ahead and keep on watching. Okay, so I wanna start off with my Pat McGrath collection. So I have these four to start with. These are my four Mothership palettes that are in normal packaging. I do have two other Mothership palettes that are like limited edition packaging. I mean, we know that Pat McGrath's over here re... I mean, at this point, it's kind of annoying, but she's taking old palettes and then repackaging them into new palettes and limited edition packaging, and it's just, it, it's annoying. But anyway, this is Mothership 3 Subversive, and this one's got nice, pretty purple tones in here. And a lot of these, like, I think like each one of these palettes have a really nice duochrome in here. And it was before, like, the duochromes were a huge thing, because I feel like the duochromes is something that's been going on maybe in the last two to three years. So this is the Mothership Utopian Dream. This is one of the newer ones. I think this is, I think there's like Moonlight Seduction, which I don't have, and then it's this one before that. But this one has some really pretty shades in here, and I do love like these big shades in Pat McGrath palettes. They're just really pretty, and they have like this wet shine to them. This one right here is Mothership 2. This is Sublime and this green in here. This one sits at my vanity because of this green. Like, let me show you how gorgeous this is. Like, I'm constantly reaching for that green out of this palette. Is that green on its own worth $128? No, but I make sure I try to get my $128 use out of these palettes. And then this one right here is the first Mothership palette subliminal. Now, these are all of my Star Wars palettes from Pat McGrath. Now, this was like another one of those launches. This is kind of where it started, where people were getting really fed up with Pat McGrath, where she was repackaging older palettes into newer packaging. And that's and that's what she did here, because this, this is this Mothership 6 Midnight Sun. Oh, wrong way. And what's funny is, like, I have this palette. Sarah has this palette in the original packaging, but I didn't, so I wasn't, like... Super upset to have this palette in the Star Wars packaging because I love Star Wars. But if I already had it, I wouldn't have bought it. Now I have these five pen palettes from the same collection. Now this one is Sith Seduction. And these ones are nice. I like these ones too. I feel like the quality in these five pans are the same quality in the larger Mothership palettes. Unlike the Holiday Collection, but we'll get there when we get there. This one is Divine Droid. I like the color story of this one, but this one does not scream R2-D2 to me just because R2-D2 is like blue, white, and red. And there is a blue in here, but not like R2-D2 blue. And then the last one I have from the Star Wars collection is the golden one. Now this palette does like fit the C-3PO aesthetic, unlike the Darth Vader one or the droid one. These two palettes are from Bridgerton. So this one is the first collaboration with Bridgerton in Diamond of the First Water. I like this one. I actually did a video on this whole collection because I was so excited when I saw that Pat McGrath collaborated with Bridgerton that I couldn't help but buy both collections like the day they launched but I definitely prefer this one over this one. So I'm actually gonna keep this open so you can see the comparison and color stories. This one is the second collaboration with Bridgerton and it's Belle of the Ball. And I did not do a first impressions on this palette, but I, I definitely like this one more. I don't know, it just makes me think of spring and Bridgerton just seems like a springtime show to me. I don't know what it is, but this color story fits the theme better. 
my last two Pat McGrath palettes. So this is Divine Rose 2, which is one that Pat McGrath just re-released in another limited edition packaging. So you can now get this in gold chrome packaging, but honestly, 150, or you can just get the black packaging for 128. So, and I'm pretty sure when I got this one, it was 128. It wasn't more money because it came in pink chrome packaging. Now, this is my last Pat McGrath palette and my least favorite Pat McGrath palette. This is one of the holiday collections, I think from maybe two years ago. And this is in, this is the Mothership Celestial Nirvana. Every holiday, Pat McGrath comes out with a larger Mothership palette in this cardboard packaging. And the quality is not the same. In my opinion, this quality is nowhere near the same as the Mothership palettes. It's just... They're creamy, they're nice, they're just not as nice. I will be keeping it because like, I'm not gonna get rid of it. But I also paid full price for this. This one was sitting in TJ Maxx for quite a while and I, I got this when it first came out. So I didn't pay TJ Maxx prices for this Pat McGrath palette. I, I paid Sephora prices. All right, so here are five of my Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes. These ones are like the, the pre-Norvina, like the big artistry palettes, which I have those as well, and I'll show those next. But I kind of separated what I would call my, my old Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes and my new Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes. So this one right here is the Norvina palette. This is one I'm gonna be decluttering, and I'm gonna be decluttering it because, my gosh, have things, this is boring. I don't know why I purchased this. Like looking back at it now, I remember how popular it was, but this is not something I need to keep in my collection. So I will be decluttering this palette. Now Subculture, I'm on the fence and that's because I really like the color story of Subculture. I just don't like the quality of Subculture, which we all know is like this dusty texture. But like the shimmer is swatched nicely, as you're about to see. It's the mattes that are dusty and just kind of blend away. I remember getting this palette and being disappointed along with everyone else on the internet, but I'm still gonna keep it because I like the, the jewel tones, like the dirty grungy vibe that Subculture is. Now this is the Riviera palette. And I like this one for the summer. It is super bright and the quality is really nice and I will be keeping it because it's mine. <laughs> and look, they still swatch so nicely. I'm doing that thing where I'm swatching only the shimmer. So let me swatch a matte. This is the Alyssa Edwards palette, another really beautiful bright palette and I'll be keeping this one as well. Along with the Ambrazy palette. I will be keeping this one because I am a sucker for these bubblegum shimmery pinks. I'm not gonna lie. I mentioned in other declutters, like with the Barbie palette, I think the same pink was in a Kylie palette. Like, I love it, so I'm keeping it. These are my three newer Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes, and I will be keeping all of these because I absolutely love the new formula, the new layout, and just, I love the new palettes. So this one is the Nuevo palette or Nueve. I don't know how to say it, but I love this palette so much. I love this palette for like the fall or like August, September. I don't know why, but I absolutely love it. And I will be keeping it. I also have the Cosmos palette. This is actually one that I got for my birthday last year and wore it. I got it for my birthday and because I went to go see Fall Out Boy, which was so much for Stardust tour, I felt like this palette was necessary to wear for that night. I don't know why, but this palette just reminds me of Fall Out Boy. It really does, probably because I went to the concert wearing this palette. But I will be keeping this. And then this is the Fall Romance palette. I use the hell out of this palette in the fall. Honestly, I use the hell out of it during October, November, and December. This is probably my favorite Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. Like I, I, I just absolutely love it. So I will be keeping it. 
have every single Norvina Pro Pigment palette and I will be keeping every single one of them. So I'm gonna quickly show you every single one of them. So this is volume one. Now the quality of these palettes are really, really nice, which is why I'm not gonna be getting rid of them because they were a pretty penny and they're really nice palettes. Even though they came out back to back to back and people were really upset about it, I purchased them back to back to back. This is volume two, which is kind of reminds me of like a marine themed palette. Volume three, but this from this is like, to me a really pretty fall palette because of all the burnt tones, but because all the tones are really like that burnt, I have no other way to describe it except for burnt. It, it gives me a 1970s vibe. Volume four is very Mean Girls-esque. And when I say that, it's just very pink. Volume five has a lot of pretty purples in here. And I do love playing with purple shadow. I feel like purple looks really nice any time of the year. It's like perfect for the summer, perfect for the fall, perfect for the winter. I just, I really like playing with purple shadows. And lastly, I have volume six, which has some really pretty, beautiful, bright colors in here. And then you've got this row down here that's jewel tones. I feel like anyone who is even like the slightest bit alternative in the way they dress or a little bit edgy, a little bit, little bit tatted up, you know, funky hair, piercings, all of that stuff. Anyone who has that kind of style loves Melt Cosmetics, I swear. Because like, I absolutely love Melt Cosmetics. Other creators I follow who are a little bit more alternative, like in their fashion sense, also love Melt Cosmetics. I think it's just like ingrained in us. So I have a lot of Melt Cosmetics and a lot, I'm not getting rid of any of my Melt Cosmetics. So I'm gonna start off with my newest ones. Actually, this isn't even my newest one, but I'm gonna start off with the Nightmare Before Christmas palette. So this one is Halloween Town. And this is something that is still available. And if you love Nightmare Before Christmas, I definitely recommend these. These are absolutely gorgeous. And I don't know, I feel like there was a time where Melt was a little bit, that they were lagging, but their stuff wasn't as interesting. And then all of a sudden with the Nightmare Before Christmas collaborations and then another palette that I'll show you in a little bit, just, just everything's been great. This one is the Christmas Town palette. And again, this one's really pretty as well. I like the color stories for both of these Nightmare Before Christmas palettes. I also have all four of the Bad Side Zodiac palettes. I believe these palettes were not given as much attention as they deserve. I, I love these little palettes. These are just absolutely adorable and the quality of them are fantastic. And I like how they're smaller in size, so they're easier to travel with, but they're also really easy to make looks with because everything's kind of grouped together. So this first one is the Water bad side zodiac so cancer scorpio pisces all of these ones so this is actually the palette for my zodiac now even though i am a cancer this one is my favorite out of all four of these palettes and this is the fire so this is your aries your leo your sagittarius this is the perfect little fall mini palette and I am pretty sure I raved quite a bit about this palette over the fall of 2023. And a lot of the looks I had on my eyes or I was using was this palette. I like this one too. This one's definitely my second favorite. And this is the Earth. So it's Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. And you got some, you got a beautiful green in here, some nice mustard yellows and some really pretty gold shades. And then finally, we got the Bad Side Zodiac Air Palette. So this is Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And technically, like myself, I am a Cancer Gemini cusp. So this palette technically is for me as well. This one, to me, is the, the least exciting palette because it's just the pinks in here are kind of boring. 
and it does have two very beautiful purple shades, but I mean, it's my least favorite, but I'm not getting rid of it. So here is my collection of marijuana themed eyeshadow palettes, basically. So Melt usually does something for 420, where they come out with some type of 420 themed palette. This past year in 2023, I believe it was like a mushroom styled palette. I actually didn't get that one. The color story didn't really pull me in, so I didn't pick it up, but I do have Smoke Sessions 420 and Mary Jane. So this is Smoke Sessions. This is also my first Melt Cosmetics palette. And I obviously love the green side. Then I have the 420 palette here. This one's just a little bit more dirty. So you got like your dirty greens, you got some really pretty yellows to brighten up your look here. I like this palette. This one didn't get a lot of attention. Um, I actually believe a lot of people didn't like it. And I like this one. Oh, you can still see swatches from on my hand from earlier, but. And then finally, I have the Mary Jane palette. I like this one because this is really cool toned. So this is a great palette to also have as like as a basics, just because it's cool toned. You've got your mattes and shimmers and you can do some really pretty neutral looks where they're for every day or even make them bolder with the shimmers for a night out. Like you can go either way with this palette and the quality of this palette is phenomenal. My last three melt palettes. So I have the first Gemini. I definitely want to get Gemini 2 because I have Gemini 1 and I feel like I have to have both. And it might be something I'll pick up soon. So this one I got in a mystery box and I couldn't believe I never picked it up before because this has got these really pretty earth tones that I really enjoy. When I do a neutral look, I always do something that's kind of like a neutral green and those are right here within this palette. And then you've got you know, your yellow toned nudes over here. Now this one is my newest, and I think it is the newest Melt product out. No, it's not, they just released some stacks, but this is their latest palette, and this is with the collaboration of Bailey Syrian. I did a first impressions on this palette. I love this palette so, so much. This palette is sitting at my vanity. I'm actually gonna just put it back right after I show you this, but this palette is my favorite I'd say it's my favorite palette at the moment because I've used this so many times since I've had it and I've only had it since Christmas day and I didn't start using it until January. And then finally, I do have the Morte palette. I really wish I had the Vita palette too. Unfortunately, I don't. And people on Macari really want a lot of money for theirs. And even though I've liked quite a few of them, I haven't purchased it, but this palette is so, so pretty with the blues and the reds. I love anything Day of the Dead or Skull related. I've mentioned this before in previous videos and I'm obviously gonna be keeping it. Now, to me, Huda Beauty is a high-end makeup brand. I know some people just see this as a Sephora brand and all of the makeup that you're seeing in this video is makeup you can buy at Sephora or high-end makeup, but a Huda Beauty palette is usually almost $70 each time. I mean, that's at the same cost as a Natasha Denona palette. And Natasha Denona is considered high-end. So to me, Huda Beauty is high-end. And I have several palettes from Huda Beauty. I love quite a few products from Huda Beauty. There's products that are like my staples that I use every day, like my eyeliner, my brow pencil, my foundation, a concealer that I really enjoy. So I really like this brand. And so I do have the Huda Beauty Pretty Grunge Palette. This is the most recent launch. Gosh, I said that earlier and I'm saying it again. I think they actually just released new nine pans. But besides that, this is the most recent big eyeshadow palette launch. I also have the Rose Quartz. Now I'm sure you probably already figured it out. I will be keeping all of these. I also have the Mercury Retrograde Palette. This one is beautiful. I also have the Naughty Nudes, which this one's really nice because this one has like some berry tones in here. You got the Pretty Grunge that's gonna be cool toned. And then you have the Empowered Palette, which is gonna have more warm tones. So I've got my warm tone nudes, I've got my pink tone nudes, I've got my 
cool tone nudes. I got some pastels, some pinks. I got a bit of everything from Huda. So I not only do I have like the large Huda Beauty palettes, I have quite a few of these nine pan Huda Beauty palettes. I have two from like the nudes collection, but I have the nude light, which also has a really pretty purple shimmer and a pink shimmer. These are great to travel with and they're really easy to kind of open the palette. You can immediately pick a look. It doesn't take you a minute to think it through. So this is the nude rich. So this one's gonna be some darker nudes in here, but this one has some more coppery shades in here and some red toned browns. I have all three of the pastels from Huda Beauty. These actually launched around the same time that ColourPop did the same thing and I bought both, okay? So I have the pastel rose pastel lilac and then finally pastel mint now these ones right here cause a bit of a controversy i love these ones so much i have all three of the neons this one is the pink neon i can't remember what the names of these palettes are as you can tell they're well loved oh there's that barbie pink again I don't know what it is with this color, but I absolutely love a Barbie pink. The neon orange. And finally, the neon green. And then the last two I have are from like the color block collection. And so these ones are a little bit different because there is eyeshadows in here but then there's also a cake liner right here. So purple and orange. And then this one is the blue and green. So cake liner up here in this corner. I have six Natasha Denona palettes and these are like the midi palettes. To me, this is a full size palette. I, I will probably never buy one of those very large Natasha Denona palettes, but I'm obviously going to keep all of these. I don't know why I keep saying obviously, but I'm keeping all of these. So this is the My Dream palette. And I really, really like this one because it has like these deep burgundy shades over here. And this is the one I like to grab when, when we go to the Golden Nugget or do like a weekend vacation away. Like this is my go-to travel palette just because it can do so much with it with the mattes and the shimmers and the black in here is, it is called the blackest black and it is the blackest black. It builds up really nicely, but like that's just swatching it. So this is the Natasha Denona Yucca palette, Yucca palette. I have no idea how to pronounce it, but I absolutely love this color story because of all the greens. It, it's definitely summer vibes, but I feel like you could use it a lot for the fall as well. And I actually got this palette pretty late in the season. I didn't buy it as soon as it came out because I was just trying to be good. And honestly, when it came to this palette, it was between this one and the Oka Van Gogh palette from Nomad. But to me, they were very similar. And I chose this one over that one. So this is the Natasha Denona Zendo palette. This is actually a palette I got in BoxyCharm, which surprised the absolute living shit out of me. Okay, because this is a really nice palette with a really nice color story, and I'll be keeping this. And the Natasha Denona Retro Glam Palette. Another palette with lots of greens in it, but this time it's more blue-toned greens. The Natasha Denona Pastel Palette. This is one I cannot wait to start using again because spring has spring is springing, and this one's about to just be at my desk. I'm obviously keeping this one. And then this is the Natasha Denona Love Palette. This is actually my first Natasha Denona palette. So this was a Valentine's launch years and years ago, and I will be keeping this one. All right, so right here I have my Patrick Ta palette. I included this one because I can't remember if I went through this for my face palettes, but this does have some eye products in here as well. I have a Charlotte Tilbury palette and a Too Faced palette. So I'm gonna start off with the one that I'm not sure if I did. I am going to be keeping this. 
and this is the one that came out for the holidays. So it has two cream blushes, two powder blushes, and then four eye toppers over here. Like I said, I can't remember if I mentioned this earlier in a different declutter that's part of all of these declutters. So I thought I would just uh, pull it just in case. And then I have each of the Major Dimension palettes. So this is Patrick Ta Major Dimension Volume 1. And this one's going to be all warm nudes with a mixture of shimmers and mattes along with two different cream shadows. And then I have Patrick Ta Major Dimensions Volume 2. The shades in here are a little bit more rosy toned. So this whole top row right here are all shimmers, two cream, and then the bottom row is all mattes. And finally, this is Patrick Ta Major Dimensions Volume 3. And this one is where it has, this is all mattes. So the bottom row is cool tone and the top row is warm tone. And just like the other two palettes, there is two cream shadows. Now this Charlotte Tilbury palette I've had, I got it in a mystery box. I bought one a couple, not last summer, so the summer of 2022, and I still haven't used it. I don't know how I feel about it, but this is called the Instant Eye Palette Smoky Eyes Are Forever. And so the way this palette is set up is like, they're grouped. So you got one look, two look, three looks, four. If you're looking for a quick, easy look and you don't know what you're doing. It is perfect for that, but I haven't even tried this palette. I don't even know if I want to keep this palette. So this is a palette that I'm gonna put in my maybe bucket that I am gonna go through. I'm not gonna go through it in this video. I'm gonna do a separate video going through that, bu that bucket, which will probably be with organizing or reorganizing all of my makeup. I haven't decided yet. This is from Too Faced. This is the Too Femme palette. This palette is really, really pretty, but I wanna use it one more time. If I don't like it still, I'm gonna go ahead and declutter it. The pants in here are really fucking small though. I have two Natasha Denona palettes. All right, I made an error. I'm editing this footage and I realized that I did not mean Natasha Denona. This is very obviously Danessa Myricks. So I have Lightwork Volume 4 and Lightwork Volume 5. These are palettes that I obviously would not be decluttering. This one is obviously, I keep saying obviously. So this one is my least favorite and that is because I despise the center row and I am so glad that Lightwork Volume 5 does not have a row like this. So this is like a pressed cream version of the Chrome Flakes and these two and then these are aqua liners that have very minimal pigment, which is why I don't like them. But the rest of the shades in here are gorgeous. So there's something in here called Velvet Chromes, which are like these shades up here, along with Glass Metallics as well. That's what this little cheat sheet says. But these Velvet Chromes are absolutely gorgeous. These are multi-chrome shades that have, I mean, these are probably my favorite multi-chromes I own. They are just the softest. I honestly, by touching them, you wouldn't think that they were powder, but they are, because they do feel very creamy. So, and then this one is the one that just came out this past fall. But just like that palette, it's all, you know, different toppers, but it does not have like the pressed chrome formula, thank God, because that was awful. And a lot of these are shifting shades as well where they are multi-chromes. Man, I feel like those ones don't swatch as well as the other ones, but they still feel just as nice. And I will be keeping this. I feel like I've made it to the end of a very, very long road. And I saved these two palettes for last because these are palettes that I basically have on display and I don't use because I just love them that much. And surprisingly, one is from Urban Decay, which is a brand I usually don't like their products. And the other one is from KBD. So this one is the Game of Thrones Urban Decay palette. I am a huge Game of Thrones fan. So this has the Iron Throne that just kind of pops up like this. And then also the palette is like a little drawer. So it's kind of on its own, but 
this is the palette for the um for the game of thrones so you've got the bay of dragons for targaryen you got king's landing for which would be the lannisters basically and then you got winterfell for the starks and then you've got hard home which is going to be for the north and i absolutely love game of thrones i am so excited that we're finally going to get another season of house of dragon this year and i really can't wait for the Jon snow spinoff because i you know i'm one of those girls i really like me a bit of Jon snow but this will go back on display and then the other palette that i display is the saint and center palette from kvd so i got this is actually my second one my first one took a nice swim during a move where it got soaking wet and it completely damaged the palette. And so I actually repurchased this one off of Macari, um, paid a pretty penny for it too, because this has never been used. And I just, this is one of those palettes that I used the shit out of my first one. And I just remember constantly reaching for it all the time. I like the theme behind this palette. I actually have both perfumes as well. And it just brings back really good memories. I'm not gonna swatch it because this has never been used. And I just really like the, I just keep it for the memory. So I'm gonna put this one back on display. So that is the rest of my eyeshadow collection. Um, if you missed parts one or two, I'll go ahead and like link them down below. And I think next I'm going to be going through my lip products and then I should be done decluttering majority of my makeup. So go ahead and like this video and subscribe. But until next time, bye y'all.